I guess our, our touring cycle went from just a few countries to all the countries. And I don't know why that is, but something about that song just resonated with all walks of life. By the time I was 18, only a few months into playing, it was all I wanted to do. It was distracting me from my college work and from my jobs. And so I, I had to become a musician because I was so um, interested in this magical thing called music. I started to learn to play guitar when I was 17 years young. I was a senior in high school. A friend of mine uh, played guitar. And once he showed me my first chord shape, which I think was an E minor, E minor and A minor back to back, I just, I couldn't stop. I wanted to make up songs. I wanted to learn more chords. I wanted to find favorite songs and learn those. If there are parts of a song that I found were challenging, whether it's the melody or, or trying to reach a certain chord or it, it's existing in a bar chord that I hadn't learned yet, I just decided that I would make the song my own. It's like, yes, I'm covering the song and I want to tribute it the best I can, but I can't copy it. That's just not who I am as a musician yet. I can't make it sound exactly like the original. So what I'm going to do is try to connect with it emotionally and find my own workaround, uh, find my own cheat, find my own key perhaps, find my own position to simplify the song so that I can spend more time connecting with my audience or connecting with the lyric of the song. That was always more important to me. I think if you really love a song, you owe it to the song and to yourself to stick with it, to learn it and be familiar with it enough that you can put the chart away and you can perform it not just for your friends and family, but for yourself, for the joy of bringing this song to life out of your voice and out of your instrument. You know, I got a lot of my technique from watching others. And when I was learning to play guitar, I was way into Dave Matthews, way into Ani DeFranco, both of those players, very, very percussive, slapping, pulling at the strings. And it basically gave me permission to lay into the instrument. And prior to that, I looked at the guitar as this fragile piece of gear. I didn't know how to touch it or how to hold it. But watching other players dig in really showed me that I could, I could too. The first song I learned on the guitar was Typical Situation by Dave Matthews Band. And it, it really only required maybe pressing down on two strings, and the rest was, uh, was a picking pattern. Quite easily, like almost instantly, I could sing the song, I could perform the song, and that was such a cool feeling. It was almost like I got to know the, ma the magician's secret on how he does the trick. And I've opened for Dave Matthews a bunch. I don't think I ever told him that Typical Situation was the first song I ever learned, but. Well, you done done me in your bed. I felt it, tried to beat you, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks, and now I'm trying to get back. I had been performing for quite a few years, touring nationally, even touring uh, parts of Europe and Asia and Australia with my first and my second album. And it was during my second album tour that I'm Yours started to pick up uh, some popularity. And it was after that tour that I'd go into the studio and record it. Uh, so I knew that audiences were hungry for it. And when we recorded it and it came out, I guess our, our touring cycle went from just a few countries to all the countries. And I don't know why that is, but something about that song just resonated with all walks of life. Very exciting time, because we had been putting in the work, we knew how to live life on the road, but now the venues were getting bigger, there was a lot more excitement around our show, and specifically around the song, I'm Yours. Other artists started knocking on my door and asking if I'd come and write with them, or 
when I lend my voice to their tune. Uh, people wanted to come here to the studio to find out if we had any magic or secret formula that could help them out. I remember shortly after I'm Yours came out, Jimmy Cliff called and wanted to come over. So we had Jimmy Cliff here for a day. Uh, I mean, that's huge. He's a reggae icon or just songwriting icon in general. So we had a lot of cool surprises and, and it really hasn't stopped. The success of I'm Yours continues to uh, create invitations for collaboration and invitations for world travel. Uh, it's very, very exciting. Can't wait. I'm yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If more people played instruments, there would be musical train rides, musical subway cars, musical flights. Can you imagine like a cross continental flight and, you know, 80% of the plane has an instrument on them. Ukulele, violin, somebody's got a bass. It would, there would just be more song and maybe even more musical conversations like basic ordering of a latte, you know? And that'd be amazing. When you play music, it's a bit of like a magic trick where you, you shift from just speaking to soaring, to singing, to dancing above the, the sort of the energy of conversation, you're somewhere else. It makes you feel special. It makes you feel like you've tapped into something. Like there's always music playing, we just need the instrument to sort of reveal it. And when we're let in on that secret or we're let in on that magic trick, I think it, it invites in you some compassion or some understanding that the world is more magical than it may appear. Well, you done done me in your bed, I...